Hi, I'm Chris Santa Croce. I'm with Superfly in Sandy, Utah, Point of the Mountain. We are the handlers for Advanced Gin and Nova. And today we are talking about tandem paragliding. So if you're an aspiring tandem pilot, brand new tandem pilot, long-term professional tandem pilot, this message is for you. And this kit right here is for you. I know it's nothing special, but a climbing runner and one, maybe two sport climbing carabiners. I know you're wondering to yourself, what's it all about? And here's your answer. The history of tandem paragliding has been marred with a few unfortunate accidents. Um, a couple of note, uh, tandem pilot not hooked in to the harness, uh, passenger halfway hooked in one spreader bar, pilot halfway hooked in one spreader bar. Uh, the list sort of goes on and on. There are a number of malfunctions that can happen. Some of them quite damning, some of them a little more innocent, but all of them of some consequence or another. So what can you do as a pro to make sure that if you come up shy on your pre-flight or if you get unlucky in some way that you can be a pro about it and fix the situation and have all the available resources to make it right. Here we go. Any pilot that's ever had a failed pre-flight will tell you that they did a complete pre-flight and that something changed between the pre-flight and the actual takeoff. In our camp, we do a thing called the killer pre-flight checklist, which is done as the pilot and passenger are just about to push out into the air. It involves having a look to see that the passenger actually has their harness buckled up, that they're actually hooked in both sides, that the pilot has leg straps, that we're actually hooked into the glider, the brakes will work and there's no reserve dragging. We kind of do that all in the last couple steps, a lot because we have a flying site that's flat on top and there's nothing better to do, but also because it matters. And that's your last chance to save it. That's your last chance to abort. We all loathe the idea that we get in the air with something crazy like this. Now, I use screw gate carabiners on my main carabiners. These need to be steel, by the way. And we all loathe the idea that we get in the air and we look over at this horrific sight. And so uh, it's happened. It's happened a lot. And it's not totally explicable, but when it does happen, the question is, what are you gonna do? And the answer for me is, I'm going to reach in my pocket, grab my climbing runner with carabiner, wrap it around somewhere and then on my harness and then up through the riser somewhere. And here's where you have to practice a little bit and you have to be a little bit creative, but basically I'm looking for something that's gonna give me peace of mind that I can finish the flight with it half hooked in or even better that I can put up the backup system and then slide the carabiner back into place. And maybe if it's not bent already, then screw it shut. In the history of tandem paragliding, this has happened. Number two on your list of things that the climbing runner can be used for. If the tandem passenger's only hooked in on one side, and believe me, it's happened, then it gets pretty weird pretty quick, but it's not immediately disastrous. And your tandem passenger sometimes has presence of mind to reach up here and grab this and hold themselves in position. Furthermore, you could encourage the passenger, hey, grab this, quick. After that happens, this part is tricky, getting hooked back in. I don't know if there's any history of this ever being done, but it's kind of a fleeting moment and having some resources is really the best you can hope for. So let's just think about it. Uh, a quick clip here, down here through the harness. Remember, and this person can only hold on for so long and then back to this beaner. Are we off the hook? Did we just save the day? I think so. There's even the chance to hook it back in. Nothing like having a second chance. So we've substituted a, a weak little beaner here in my, my tandem glider, just to illustrate a point. There's been more than one person that got in the air and realized that they had an open link and that they had a bending triangular link connecting their riser to lines. And so there's no worse feeling in the world. This is actually one of the reasons why I like the idea of a sport climbing carabiner because they're a little bit delicate and they'll let you do superhero things like Lark's head the other end around the carabiner and then come up through here you see that and now all of a sudden that's backed up this can be hooked wherever you like as tight as you like or as loose as you like and this there's no fixing this link but there is a hell of a lot of peace of mind that can be had from knowing that the whole glider is not going to uh, start flapping above head when that uh, quick link breaks all the way that's number three okay so I'm going to actually cop to this one 
I don't know how it happened, but I did get in the air one time and I noticed that the passenger's legs were sort of together in the split leg harness. It just gave me the clue that one of these sides wasn't connected. And I had done a pre-flight and I don't know what the deal was. I didn't feel good about it. I also didn't feel good about just uh, minimizing this fact that the one leg strap wasn't hooked up, uh, telling him that it's okay, don't worry about it. I did have my climbing runner and I did have my carabiner with me. And so I just quickly ran it through. It wasn't really going to, didn't really do anything. Wasn't really a big help, but I was slightly more pro because I had a plan. And so it was something about like this. And I told the passenger, Hey, um, this is no big deal, but I have this uh, backup here and I'm just going to run it through there so that uh, you can feel hundred percent confident and that we can continue this flight. And naturally we got back on the ground um, fairly quickly and made it right. But, um, you know, sometimes you're going to come up short. We know this. And the question is, are you going to be prepared? Will you have the resources? This is number four trick for the carabiner and the climbing runner. Many of you may remember from a couple years ago, a tandem hang gliding fatality um, where the pilot failed to hook in the passenger. And it's quite a terrible story in which the passenger was holding on to the pilot for several minutes. And uh, this is really the impetus for incorporating this piece of uh, technology is just that during those couple minutes, that tandem pilot could have done something. And the something that I'm referring to is just Lark's head uh, climbing runner around someplace on his harness and clip it to her shoulder strap or to her hook in point. That could have saved the day. All right, now it's on you. See what you can do to dream up some more uses for this. We already know that if you land in a tree, it might be smart to have a climbing runner to wrap around the tree and secure your passenger so you don't fall. But we should be able to come up with 10, easy. Good luck with your tandem flying. Stay conservative, do those pre-flights, but know that we all come up shy once in a while. And the only question is gonna be how you behave and if you're prepared.